Hi, I'm really glad to be able to be with you today, even if it has to be by video, but to talk about the crucifixion of Jesus. And um, I really am missing all my helpers for putting everything on the felt board, but we'll start by um, uh, doing the verse from John 19, 17, when Jesus, bearing his cross, went to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on the right and one on the left, and Jesus in the center. Also there, Mary, his mother, was at the foot of the cross. John, his favorite disciple. There were guards. Of course, the guards accompanied them to the place, and they stood there the whole time. And the centurion. And John 19.25 tells us, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. And in that way, Jesus, even when he was being crucified and in a great deal of pain, he took care of, he made sure his mother was well taken care of. It's amazing. Then in Mark... And if you got to see the service tonight, you were probably singing a lot of these words. Mark 15, 25. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the third hour is about 9 a.m. And the inscription of the accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. With him, they also crucified two robbers, one on his right, the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who and those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Both robbers initially both mocked him and reviled him. And then, now, when the sixth hour had come, that was about noonday, and if you know what 12 noon is like, it's usually very sunny, very bright. But what happened at that time, a darkness came over all the earth. This is where I'm really missing my felt story helpers. <laughs> You can imagine what it must have been like for the people who were watching the crucifixion, who were there with him, when the darkness began descending at 12 noon until 3 p.m., till the ninth hour, and that's when the sun was completely dark. And one thing that was so amazing uh, Luke 23 tells us in verse 34 that Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And then the very, very most important part of this story, in Luke 23, it tells us, Then one of the criminals who was hanged blasphemed him, saying, this is this criminal. If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other one, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. 
but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's the most important and amazing part for me. Um, and then in Matthew, the centurion, um, he is watching all these things. He's taking it in. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and rocks were split. So you can imagine it's dark, the earth is quaking, rocks are splitting. And so what the centurion said, so when the centurion and those with him, this is in verse 54, who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. And tradition tells us that that centurion, his name was St. Longinus. So we, um, I, I, he became a Christian. So you wonder why, why did the centurion and the thief, why did they change their minds? What kind of things, we don't know for sure, but some things, one thing, they knew Jesus was innocent. They heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know what, not what they do. They saw the darkness, they felt the earthquake and the rocks split, and they became convinced, truly, this is the Son of God. So, um, it would have been wonderful if everyone had done this, had felt the same way. But um, one thing I wanted to share with you that I thought was, was is really amazing about God's grace to us and um, something for you to think about on Good Friday. So for this thief, he was not going to get to be baptized. He didn't have any long years of sanctification. He, um, he wasn't going to be tested to prove his faith genuine. He wasn't going to do one single good deed. And yet he was at the 11th hour, he was rescued and will be in paradise. And um, so this is an encouragement for everyone who, um, for all men and women who will ever live, who have wrecked their lives beyond help. Um, when all hope is lost, they ask Christ and they receive just for the asking. And this reminds me of one of my very favorite verses, um, from St. Macarios of Optina. He said, our greatest sin is like a little spark falling into the ocean of God's love. And the, um, one other thing I wanted to share with you before we finish, uh, we know tradition tells us the name of the repentant thief is Dismas, and that's very, very special to me because um, I met my future husband in a place called Dismas House, and we were students at Vanderbilt, and we were both involved in the prison ministry, but we didn't know each other, and um, I would go and visit women in prison, and he was living in a house called Dismas House, and um, it was a place for Vanderbilt students and men who had been in prison but needed a place to live to make a transition to coming out of prison and trying to lead a good life. So he was one of the students helping the prisoners, the ex-prisoners. And um, one day there was a celebration at Dismas House, and I was invited, all the people involved in the prison ministry were invited, and Mr. Peck is the first person I met at Dismas House, and he gave me a tour of the house. So now you know how we met, <laughs> and the rest is history. So um, thank you for listening, and I hope there were a few things that gave you some things to think about today. And I am really, really, really looking forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. God bless.